Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Sterling Marlin's Coors Light Dodge from 2002 and Sterling Marlin's Coors Original Dodge from 2002. But as always, let's take a quick look at the boxes. As you can tell, these are the wider boxes because these cars did come attached to bases. Which back then it was just screws instead of epoxy, so they were much easier to get off, but whatever. But anyways, on the front of the box, you got Sterling Marlin number 40, Sterling Marlin signature. Got Coors Light, got the mountains in the background. Got the same stuff down the side. Action Performance Companies, same stuff down the other side. They made a total of 21,708 of these things. Don't know if people missed those production numbers or not. Here is the Coors Original box. You see it says Sterling Marlin 40, got Sterling Marlin signature, says Coors Original. Has an actual picture of the car on track. Always loving boxes do that. Has the checkered flag pattern in the background that is on the car. And once again, has the same stuff all around. This one they made a total of 15,804 of. Let's both have the copyright and such on the bottom. But why don't we get the cars in here? The silver bullet is very iconic, but nobody remembers the golden bullet for some reason. But why don't we start with the silver bullet since that is the primary. Just a beautiful, beautiful car. It was really cool to see Landing Castle do a throwback to this car this year. This is one of those cars that's just always nice to look at. The metallic silver, the bright day glow red, everything about it is just amazing. Which Coors Light seemingly still does kind of care about the sport. They still do sponsor some stuff. They don't sponsor a car, but I mean, the back bumper of Chase Elliott's pink Hooters car had Coors Light on it. They literally gave Landing Castle money for his foundation that was the reason for the Coors Light car. Like, they were impressed by the throwback and actually gave money to the foundation, whatever. I forgot what the foundation was at the end of that car, so. They still have some interest. Maybe we'll see a car come back once. I don't know. Would definitely love to see a Coors Light car again. But anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Coors Light. Got Dodge, number 40. Down the side, you got Coors Light. You got Target, Dodge, Kenna Metal, Lincoln Welders, and Sterling. As in Sterling Marlin, or is that just a different sponsor? I don't know what that is. Anyways, on the C post, you got absolutely nothing. On the B post, you got Bosch, Snap-on, and Dodge. There you can see the awesome metallic silver on this car. On the back, you got Coors Light. You got Dodge RT, number 40, and Dodge again. On the deck lid, you again have Coors Light. You got the same stuff down the other side as usual. Let's take a look under the hood. Back when you can easily open hoods. Just says Coors Light under there. There's the old Dodge engine detail if you want to see that. Take a look under the deck lid. You get your typical fuel cell and such back here. Obviously, this is before they gave us roof flaps on ARCs. And there is the underside of the car if you want to see that. This was when they were still doing the sticker tires. So just a beautiful, beautiful car. Very iconic. But now let's go to the other one, the lesser known one, the Coors Original Dodge. This one raced about five times in 2002. I think he got the pole with this car at Pocono, or at least led laps with this car at Pocono. Ran this at like Sonoma too. It was basically in the summer months. It's always cool when we get different brands under the same like beer brand. Because from what we've heard, that that's usually different brands don't like each other half the time. Like Brad Kozlowski and Dale Jr. were talking about that on his podcast that like everyone wanted Dale Jr. to want a Bud Light car. But he said like the Budweiser people and the Bud Light people don't like each other. So the Budweiser people didn't want the Bud Light people touching their car. So of course is the same way or not, but it's definitely cool to get different brands like this. He ran a few different Coors original cars. He ran like a blue, black, and red one like a year before. I think he ran another one back before the Silver Bullet really existed. But Except this is a perfect golden bullet. Still has the Dayglow colors and everything. But anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Coors original. Kind of hate how the C is covering the hood pin. <laughs> so you, it looks really awkward if you're looking from the front. Because you got silver, 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 silver. Where's the hood pin? Oh. <laughs> but anyways, you got Dodge on the front, number 40. Down the side, you got Coors Original. You got Target, Dodge, Kenna Metal, Lincoln Welders, and Sterling again. Again, nothing on the C post. On the B post, you got Bosch Spark Plug, Snap-on, and Dodge. Both of these just have your regular contingencies and such. Neither of them have the Bud Pole Award. I wonder if that's one of those things where they didn't want to put that logo on their diecast because it's a different competing beer. I don't know, but they do have Winston Cup. On the back, you have Coors Original. Got Dodge RT, number 40, and Dodge. 
On the deck lid, again, you have Coors Original. Same stuff down the other side as usual. Take a look under the hood. So you got Coors Original. Once again, there is the Dodge engine detail if you want to see that. Take a look under the deck lid. Got your typical fuel cell back there. Obviously, no roof flaps. And there is the underside of the car if you want to see that. So this car is metallic gold with a kind of ghosted on different type of metallic gold checkered bag pattern. Did I say checkered bag? Checkered flag pattern. <laughs> so it's really cool. Both colors appear to be metallic, but the uh, like regular color of the car is kind of more of a sparkly metallic, and the checkered flag is more of just like a typical metallic, if that's coming across on camera. But like I said, this is a really nice paint scheme. It's a shame that nobody remembers this. Like, everyone only thinks of the silver bullet. Nobody remembers any of the other course cars for some reason. That's definitely a shame. I always wish these cars had a, you know, day glow. Like, like this. Do you, was this still a side skirt? <laughs> I don't know if that still counts as a side skirt, but it's like, that always annoyed me that you have the orange around the whole car and then this is just black. Like, make that the day glow orange, the day glow red, whatever you want to call this color. It does appear between these two cars that the uh, Coors Original diecast, the Day Glow, is a little bit brighter than the Silver Bullet for some reason. <laughs> Not sure why that is. If you want these diecasts, they are not too hard to find, but they're not cheap. Like these, uh, being iconic cars, especially the Silver Bullet, you're not going to get these in the like five dollar clearance bin. But as you can see earlier, they did make a lot of them, so they're not too hard to find. Definitely makes an awesome set of cars. Said 2002 was the year that Sterling Marlin probably was going to win the championship if he didn't get injured late in the year. Also, you know, this, this year is the year that he, you know, pulled his fender out in the Daytona 500 and basically threw that race away. What is considered the biggest bonehead move in, like, all of NASCAR history. Or at least one of the biggest bonehead moves in all of NASCAR history. That was, uh... I was happy when he did that because, you know, I was a Ward Burton fan as a kid, so... Ward Burton won that race, <laughs> so I was good, but that was definitely strange that he did that. So like, pretty sure that had been a rule for a long time by that point, so I don't know why. Especially, like, he, he acted like he nobody was going to see him. Like, he was just like, what? What am I doing? What's wrong? <laughs> it's like, you're on live TV on a red flag, surrounded by other drivers and a pace car. What did you think was going to happen, Sterling? <laughs> but anyways, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. This has been a review of Sterling Marlins, Coors Light, and Coors Original Dodges from 2002. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.